Good evening. So glad to have you here this evening with us. We're going to sing a song that we uh, learned specifically for VBS, but it's become one of my favorites because we just get to declare who it is that we worship and that we serve. The earth is yours, Lord. Let's stand as we worship this morning. Right. 
that he has given me to sing and worship him and to bring back praise to him. That's the reason he gave me and gave us the gifts that we have so we can take them and we can give them back to him as a beautiful offering to him. Amen. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord this evening? You are so good to me. You heal my broken heart. You are my father. You are so good to me, you heal my broken heart, you are my Father in heaven, and you are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song, you are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. My sweet, sweet song, I will sing again. I will sing again. You ride up on the clouds. You lead me to the truth. You are. Inside me, 
this morning. Uh, would you please turn to your neighbor and welcome them as well. Good evening. We are so glad that you're here this evening. I've got three announcements that I want to share with you this evening. The first has to do with home fellowship groups. Those are going to be taking place on February 4th. There was an insert in the worship folder this week. If you are interested and you happen to have your worship folder with you, if you'd like to host one of those homes, you could just put your name there, drop that in the offering plate. We'll see see that that information gets to the right person. If you don't have that with you, that's okay. If you would either contact Cindy Potter or you can contact the church office and we'll, make, uh, we'll help you in uh, preparations for that home fellowship group. Also, I want you to be aware that the next two Sundays, that's January 21st and the 28th, uh, we will be taking uh, pictures for our pictorial directory. Now, I know that there are a lot of individuals that would say, oh, you know, I really don't want to do that. You know, I took it last time. And, and I cannot tell you how important it is to receive this picture. It helps new people as they are coming into the church to become part of the body. Uh, it helps individuals that are already part of the church to recognize new individuals as they are coming in. And the best way for us to do that is uh, to get as strong a participation as possible in that. And the third announcement that I want to share with you this evening has to do with MANA Ministries. There was an announcement in the worship folder this morning that uh, didn't quite give enough information. I just want to give you just a little bit more. What I'm looking for right now are some volunteers to help us put the bread out on the table for the Panera distribution only when we have one service, when we have a combined service. That's what I'm looking for. And these individuals would probably, I'm going to put them in a rotation, probably would need to do this probably three or four times a year. And so after the service was over, it'll take about an hour to put that, that uh, 
uh, those uh, materials out on the table, and this would be an area where you might be uh, able to serve. If that's you, if you would contact me, I'd greatly appreciate it, and then we'll get that information out to you. Okay, could I have the ushers, please, for the celebration of our tithes and offerings? Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself, it is better, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Father, we ask your blessing upon this offering that it would be used in a way that would bring you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
to think for just a moment about prayer itself. You know, one of the uh, privileges that I have had over the years is I've had the opportunity to gather together with individuals uh, who had various means of prayer. Some of those individuals would lay on the ground. Others would kneel at an altar of prayer. And then some of those would stand and bow their head. Others would lift their eyes to the sky. Some with their hands in the air. Some would sit in a chair and quietly lift their prayer before God. The position is not near as important as the intent of the heart. What we desire to do is to seek an audience with God. And so as we look to the Lord in prayer this evening, I would encourage you to seek an audience with God. If you desire to stand, then please do so. If you would like to come and represent an a need or a concern at an altar of prayer. I encourage you to do that. If you want to lift your eyes to the sky, whatever is going to help you to find an audience with God, I encourage you to seek that position right now. Master, you are good. You are awesome. Every time we come before you, we find you attentive, listening to us. You are always there for us. We never lift our voice before you and find you too busy to listen or get an answering machine or receive word that we need to come at a later date. We want to thank you for that. We want to thank you, Lord, for the patience that you show us. We confess before you that oftentimes we do not provide the same respect for you for you try to speak to us and we're too busy. You try to speak to us and we don't hear you. We don't listen. You ask of us and we ignore you. Lord, I pray for your forgiveness. I 
thank you, Lord, that we have this great gift that you have given to us to be able to not only speak to you, but listen and dialogue with you. I thank you, Lord, for your arms of tenderness and compassion that we feel around us in our hour of need. We praise you, Lord, for the eyes that you give us. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us to use those eyes so that we might see what you see. Fix our eyes upon you, Lord, the author and perfecter of our faith. Master, I pray that you would settle down upon us this evening. That you would enable us to be used of you. I pray for Pastor Isaac as he brings the message to us. I know Pastor Isaac. I, I know he has spent time with you. I know he's prayed about what he's going to share. I know that he has been listening to you. And I pray that you would find us listening as well. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. In Jesus' name, we lift this to you. Amen. Well, this evening, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 9, starting with verse 35. So if you want to turn in your Bibles there, if you have that. And I've asked some of my dear sisters in Christ to, to read this uh, for us. Matthew chapter 9, starting with the 35th verse. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpful like the sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore to send out workers into his harvest field. Matthew 9, 37 and 38. Awesome. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate you doing that. A short passage this evening. A longer message. No, just no, it's a super good passage. It's super small, but like often what happens in the Bible, these, uh, these writers seem to be really smart, and what Matthew has done here in tying lots of chapters together is just super cool, so we're going to explore that this evening. Jesus in Matthew goes back and forth between talking to Jews and talking to Gentiles, and right now he's talking to some Jews. He's talking to the, the in crowd, you could say, perhaps like some of us here this evening. He's talking to people who are following God, who are seeking after Jesus. No doubt some of the people who are listening to Jesus are people who, who are Jews, but they're not really following God. But many of the people who are there are earnestly seeking God's will and, and seeking to do what God would call them to do. Verse 36 tells us what's up with Jesus. Jesus had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, it tells us. If you look through the Gospels, you, we see that Jesus' ministry is not simply about healing, right? It's about restoring hope to hopeless people. And that's a super important note for what we're reading this evening. Spoiler alert, Jesus calls us to be people of this compassion, to be a part of the restoring hope. And we'll hear more about that in a minute. When I was in high school and college, I had the opportunity to work for farmers, and I really, really enjoyed working for farmers. It's, it's hard work if you've not been a part of it. It's a lot of time in the sun. It's a lot of draining hours. It's early mornings. It's late nights. I remember during the, the busiest season of the summers, I would come home at 8, 9 o'clock at night, and my mom would have 
made dinner that evening. They had dinner at a normal time, five or six o'clock. And then they would fix me a plate and cover it up. And depending on how late I was, it'd be on the table or it'd be in the fridge. And so I'd go and I'd eat my dinner at eight or nine o'clock, body just throbbing, go to bed, get up early the next morning and do it all over again. It was the best thing ever and really hard work. But I remember times where my boss, when it was in, in mid-July in Texas, and we'd go out to the wheat fields, we grew a lot of wheat, and he'd get out of the truck and he'd grab a head of grain and he'd rub it and he'd, he'd take a little bit and he'd just stick it in his mouth and he'd make this really weird face and chew the grain. If it was chewy, we'd get back in the truck and we'd go do something else. But if it was crunchy, grain, it's time. It's time for harvest. Call everybody you know, it's time for harvest. Everyone helped with harvest time, right? So we'd have uh, Super C, that was his wife, Cindy, and, and she, uh, she would do tons of different things, but one of the main things she did for us was cook lunch. Every day, you, you work real hard all morning, and we had a big old lunch, because we didn't know how long we'd be there, and we might be there until, you know, seven or eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night, so you wanted a big lunch to get you through the day. That was one of the things that she did every day for us, but during harvest time, there weren't the big fancy meals. <laughs> we had sandwiches and maybe a bag of chips, because we didn't have time to make a big old meal. It was harvest season, and we spent the very first morning, the fir very first thing we did in the morning is we got up and we got the tractors ready, because you couldn't go cut, it was too wet, so we'd get the tractors ready for the day. As soon as they got dry enough, we'd jump in the tractors, and we'd start cutting and start moving the grain, and then we'd go until we couldn't see, or the moisture in the air slowed us down, and we had to stop. But everyone helped. Cindy helped. Uh, the, uh, Wayne, the guy who owned the farm, his father, who was retired for years and years, the only time he ever worked was harvest. That's the only time he ever did anything. He came out for harvest because everybody helps with harvest. All the kids, aunts, uncles, grandma, everybody found a job to do during harvest because harvest took everyone to accomplish the task. And that's what Jesus is saying in this passage. It's time. People, get ready. I can see the fields and they are ready. You can almost see Jesus going, Yep, people are ready. People desire this relationship with me, Jesus says, with God. People are ready for this relationship. Some people don't know, but it's what they're desiring. It reminds me of a time in my life when, when I was in high school, and, and I, I, what I was doing was desiring the Holy Spirit to continue to shape me, but I didn't know what to call it. And I told one of my Sunday school teachers, I feel like I got like th this hole in me. And I, I don't really know what to do with it. I feel like it has something to do with God, and I don't, I don't get it. I'm, I'm a follower of Jesus. And through time and talking to Sunday school teachers and pastors and uh, through my prayer time and devotions, then we had a revival. Uh, we didn't call it spiritual renewals. We call it the old-fashioned term. We had a revival, and... And I heard the preacher talking again about the Holy Spirit moving in us, and it clicked. I'm like, yes, that's what I'm desiring. That's what's like right here that can't seem to be satisfied by anything else. That's what Jesus is saying. Jesus is looking out, and he's saying, people are like, what is it? that I need right here. People desire this relationship with God. I believe that God created us to be in a relationship with him. And when we don't have it, we try and fill it with whatever we can. But nothing seems to satisfy. Nothing seems to meet what we're trying to do, the craving that we have. You ever seen people who are there? You ever seen a situation and said, oh, this situation needs Jesus. You ever seen someone and said, oh, that person needs Jesus. You ever looked in the mirror and gone, oh, that person needs Jesus. You ever seen a bunch of people and gone, these people, their decision making, it needs Jesus. 
Jesus in this passage is saying, yeah, I see it too. Oh, these people need Jesus. That's what Jesus says. Well, I'm going to pause right there and just kind of let us sit there. We have a beautiful opportunity here at Westside to be a part of J-Train ministry. As, uh, as John and Donna have, came to Westside, we got to be a part of that. And so we're going to explore that a little bit. And uh, I think we've got a video, and then and Donna and some folks are going to come and share. Hi, my name is LaVon and I've been participating in J-Train for quite a while and my favorite thing is seeing all the kids come and the energy they bring and how excited they are for each activity we have and I know each time we do J-Train sometimes things don't always go right uh, but the Lord blesses everything we do and it's just so exciting to see so many people involved and having a good time and learning more about God. A thing I like the most about J Train is I get an opportunity to share Jesus with people. And so anybody who's within earshot gets to hear hear how Jesus can change your life. And um, it's very exciting to be able to invite kids and parents and, and teenagers um, to J Train. I like that we get to preach the Bible with the kids, but in a hands on way. Instead of them just listening, they get to interact with us. Um, I really like J-Train with sharing uh, the news of Jesus Christ with kids and watching them have fun, playing games. 
uh, giving them some food and they get to do crafts and stories. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy working with Day Train because we need we get the opportunity to go out and um, enjoy some time with the kids and their parents and have a good time outside. What you're seeing right now is us at Mission Southside. Um, we took the, several kids to Mission Southside to pack food and to um, sort clothes. And so these were some of the J-Train kids. Um, yeah. We even had a mama for that one. So that was pretty cool. This is one of our indoor times um, last February when we um, actually went to the nursing home. And we learned, we learned these songs really quick. And um, we memorized the verse. And then we sang it to the senior adults. And it was so precious. These kids were so um, attentive to these senior adults. It was really a precious. We had 14 kids at VVS this year, up to 14, not every day. We started with two and got up to 14. Those were the kids. But it was very fun because we got to see them at the, at where all the other kids, they were all so excited to show their actions. They got to show their actions with everybody else. So it was super fun. Miss Nancy's going to talk about, where'd she go? Miss Nancy's actually going to talk about this right now. So they, a couple of people came to me and asked if I would put together an adult portion of Vacation Bible School in the spring and try to figure out a way that we can include the entire family. So we got together and we talked about it a little bit and um, you know we took the, the bus was taken off to Santa Barbara and it came back with a few kids and no adults. So said, well, okay, let's go pray then. We got in the room and a couple of people joined us. Um, these people were Spanish speaking from our nested church. So we quickly ran out and grabbed one of our teens who could speak Spanish and said, come help us. So we had a good time anyway. We did things a little bit like what we do with the kids with Vacation Bible School. We studied the scripture, we ate some snacks, and we played a game. Um, you know, as the days went on, the next night we had seven or eight. By the end of the week, the entire room was filled with people, every chair was filled, and we had, most of these people were not English speaking people. So we had to evolve and change what we were doing. Um, but you know, because we were willing to show up and to serve, God's grace abounded. As we sat there, um, we had testimonies break out. We had people um, sharing deeply, and the Holy Spirit was weaving among us. One of the activities that we did was to take our prayers and our concerns to the cross. We put a paper, wooden paper cross made out of brown paper up on the wall and we handed out post-it notes and we invited people to write their cares on that and we took them and we left them on the cross. Um, another one of the things that we did, as you leave tonight, you can see a puzzle out on a, ta a round table out there. Um, now, just pause for a minute. Now. I had all these plans about what we were going to do, and nobody showed up that I thought was going to, and all of a sudden I had 22 people, and I didn't know what to do. So I called Donna, and we talked about it, and went scurrying around and going, I don't know, let's go look for this, let's look, go look for that. After several failed attempts, we found the puzzle, and we shared with one another that evening about how this little group of people had become a, a piece of the body of Christ, and we were all a piece of the body of Christ. And as they came in that night, we gave them a puzzle piece, and that puzzle formed out, out on the table. And it was a picture of the world and a number of children holding hands around that world. And it was a reminder to us that we're each a part of that body of Christ, 
and that we each have a role to play in that. Um, you know, this is just one of the things that we did as an outreach from J Train, and it was a different way of being there and answering God's call. That week was crazy. It was it. Um, it was called our family VBS, and, and we were open to in, any parent who wanted to join us. And God worked in crazy ways. I mean, it was, it was amazing. Um, you could feel God's spirit there. And, and, and there was repentance, and there was heavy hurts, and there was tears, and there were, we just became a body and it was a really precious time um oh <laughs> um there was the last part of that video was actually christmas and so i wanted to tell you a little bit about christmas um this year we had um we had oh about 76 people when you include staff and parents we had about seven 76 people there um on our J Train Christmas, and we gave out, we served uh, um, 35 food baskets and gifts um, that night, and then we delivered afterwards as well um, to families. And um, it was a food gift basket as it was a food basket as well as a gift basket we gave them. And we put in each of these um, gift baskets, we put the Jesus film in there. And we gave them candy and popcorn and a blanket and, and a game to play with their family. It was very precious, a precious opportunity. And these are all the food baskets. We put them in these little boxes, and those are the gifts. They were wrapped up with a bow, a ribbon wrapped around them. And so then we went, and had, at J Train Christmas, we had um, a big truck where we had all our gifts and stuff. <laughs> we dressed up like the nativity. Evie was one of our shepherds, and little Benjamin, Lauren's baby boy, was our baby Jesus. And we had uh, these little tiki lamps that made our little nativity, and it was a beautiful night. And it was cold. You remember that? That was really a cold night. Um, it was 30-something, but it was, it was a sweet night. It was a sweet night. And God truly blessed. God truly blessed that night. Um so many things to say. <clears throat> um, I want to share with you, I, I um, read a few surveys tonight, today, and um, I just thought you guys might appreciate hearing some of these surveys. Um, how can J Train minister to your child better? We love you guys. Thank you for all you guys do. They always talk about all the things that they learn. And they're really happy to be a part of J-Train. Do you have any suggestions for J-Train? No. My kids love you guys. I think your church has done an amazing job for this community. I love how you cater to both languages. Do you have any suggestions for J-Train? I think it's absolutely great. We love day train. That's one of the reasons we love to stay in Santa Barbara. No, you do a great job. How fun, how fun to receive those. I expected quite a bit of suggestions. We did have a very good suggestion about having something for little ones to do. But um, how cool is that? Um, we had 15 new families this fall at J train. That was huge. That's a huge number of new families. We even had a transplant. My husband had the opportunity of starting a new, a new J train at Gardner. And they had a trailer court in Gardner. And um, we had a family that started this year at J train. And when they saw the J train sign, they were so excited to come because they had an idea what to expect and um so they and their mom was one of the ones who gave a, a glowing a glowing um report about j train how exciting to be able to share jesus with so many people 
You know, we read the Christmas story to all those people. They got to hear it and they got to see it. And they, even if they didn't understand all the words because, because they were Hispanic, they got to see it played out. How very, very fun. We had the opportunity to give out several, several Bibles. We had a family this year. We had a family this year who just got married. And um, we had been ministering to them for about two and a half years. And the husband is actually very hungry spiritually. He just doesn't know it. And um, they have been talking for quite a while about coming. And actually, we've had several parents ask about Westside. We're gonna, we had two families come this year. We had two different families come this year. One a sing, uh, He's not a single man, but his family didn't come with him. He came morning and evening service. And then we had another family that came for two different Sundays plus a Sunday night. God is working. God is working. It's exciting. We have probably one of, one of really precious um, opportunity I have is to go visiting and at talking to our families about, about um, their needs. How would they like me to pray for them? And there was this, this brand new family. At only, this was the first time I'd been to their home. Well, I'd been to their home, but the mama didn't answer. It was just the kids. Um, so this is the first time I'd met mama. And she's pregnant. She's getting ready to do, I think it was like December 15th or something like that. So she was just within weeks from delivering. And I asked how she could, I could pray for her. And she just said, pray for my family. And, and so I had the opportunity to pray right there. And when I got done praying, I opened my eyes. And she was crying. What an incredible opportunity to meet the needs right there in her home. You know, a need to be able to pray and let her know that somebody cares. Just enough to ask. Um, we were able to give out several Bibles this year, so that's super fun. Um, I think the last thing I just want to tell you about is, um, where do I want to go from here? There's a lot of, kind of like Pastor said, um, the harvest is great. There's a lot of people hungry. We need... I'm looking, I'm looking to build deeper and lasting relationships with these people. We need a lot more people to join, to participate in the opportunities, to participate in loving on these people. A lot of prayer support. Man, I know that VBS was only because of God. <laughs> Our schedule got changed so many times, and we're both kind of planners, so we're kind of like this, and that schedule got changed so many times, neither one of us could keep track of what we're doing next. God, God is the one who's going to reach in and make changes in these families, and we get the opportunity, we get the opportunity to minister. I'd like to see down the road more regular opportunities on a weekly and a monthly basis to minister. Maybe do some discipleships and some Bible studies. Re-looking at these surveys, I, um, I have some opportunities. So I'm going to grab them. We need more people to partner with us in lots of opportunities, in lots of different ways. The cool thing about J Train is we've had different people doing different things. They don't have to all do the same thing. We had a different look at VBS than we did at Christmas, and a different look at J Train. So it's super fun that we can use all ages, all, all different people, and their gifts for. We served over 45 families this year. Um, at J Train. Thank you. Can you just see Jesus? The 
harvest is plentiful. In your city, in your neighborhood, at your school, in your home, there are people who've got this desire, this, this whole, and everything they do, whatever they find, it just doesn't seem to fill. Because it's made for God. It's this relationship that they're seeking. And we have what will satisfy them, right? It's Jesus that will satisfy. And we have that. So remember I said that uh, what Matthew does here is kind of tie a bunch of chapters together. Jesus tells them in the passage to pray, to ask the Lord for workers. Well, what do the workers do? Well, if you, if you look at what's happened in Matthew already, the, the previous two, three chapters, you see that Jesus is teaching them what workers of the harvest do. They are restorers of God's hope. They are participating in God redeeming people, both physically, but also spiritually, and restoring people to the society. So Jesus has taught them what, it's, what a worker does. A worker is about proclaiming, this is what you're craving. It's Jesus. So Jesus says, pray. So then let's look and see what happens after the passage. Just look at the first verse of chapter 10. Jesus sends out the disciples. Actually, you don't even have to look at the verse. Just look at the heading that somebody put in there for you. Some editor did that for you. Jesus sends out the disciples. So they're called to pray and ask the Lord of the harvest, Lord, we pray for people who would have a passion for those in our community. Lord, we pray for people who could share the good news. They have to be people who have the good news, I suppose, Lord. They need to be willing to do what you would call them to do. They need to be people who are willing to give up their time, of their energy, of their resources. Lord, there are people who need your hope. We pray for people who would rise up and share your restoring hope. And then you look to the next verse, and it changes the prayer. Instead of, Lord, we need people, it's, Lord, we pray. Pray for us. Would you help us to have the passion for those in our community? Lord, we pray that we would be people who share the good news. Help us to be willing to, to go and do what you have called us to do. We need to be willing to give our time, of our energy, our resources. Lord, there are people who need your hope. We pray you'd help us to rise up and to share your restoring hope. Well, one of the many ways at Westside that we recognize the harvest is plentiful is through J-Train. And perhaps this evening you're hearing the Lord say to you that you could be a part of J-Train. Perhaps you're hearing the Lord call you to be a worker in your school or in your home or in your neighborhood, in your extended family. The Lord is calling you. The question isn't really, Lord, are you calling me? Because Jesus tells us he calls us. The thing to pray is, Lord, help me. Help me to go. Lord, how would you have me? Where would you have me to go? Lord, help me to have a passion for people who don't know you. Help me to recognize that, that I desire and crave for this relationship with you and help that to push me to be a person who shares that passion and that restoring hope with those around us. I wonder if we could take a few minutes to pray, to allow the Lord to continue to speak to us, to speak to us each about where and how and when that might be. So would you join me? Let's, let's pray. Lord, we hear your calling. We hear you tasting the grain and calling us to go, saying, everybody, let's go. And Lord, we say that we want to be a part of that. So we're going to be quiet. We're going to continue to let you talk to us.
Thank you, oh God, for the opportunity to say, Lord of the harvest, where shall we go? Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to, to be your workers, to be people who get to share your hope with those who desire you and your love and relationship with you. Help us, Lord, to, to be people who continue to watch for the ways that we are workers in the harvest at work, at school, in our families, in the decisions that we make, in the ways that we go about our lives. Help us to recognize that we are called to be a part of you restoring your hope on your earth. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me? Lord, would you give us eyes that we may see your field, a heart for those that we see, and a life that will reflect your presence. Go in peace.